All right, so welcome Ani Kuboda, your first solo exhibition at Art Affair. Um, thank you very much that you took the way to, to Regensburg from Budapest. How long did you take to travel from Budapest to here yesterday? It was more than six hours, I think. Six hours. Just because we had to stop for <laughs> something to eat like <laughs> every hour or so. <laughs> These landside uh, places are so great, so we, <laughs> we just really love the trip, even the trip All right. to Regensburg. You told me that you brought some friends with you. Mm -hmm. How many are there? Like ten of them. Ten of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So we are mm. expecting a, a big group tonight, Hungarian power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Aniko, tell us a little bit about you. How did you start as an artist? How did you become an artist? Mm. What was your way till now? Yeah. So I always did art, all of my life. One of my earliest memories, uh, I might have been like four, three years old, I don't know. And I'm sitting on a chair painting or drawing and uh, my, my leg is so short that I cannot touch the floor <laughs> from the chair. So I, I basically did it all of my life. But uh, then for the wish of my family, I uh, had to become a physician. I loved it. To tell the truth, I, I didn't object because I was interested in basically anything. I was good at math, I was good at biology and uh, the human sciences because I was just fascinated by how the whole world works. And, uh, and uh, I uh, applied for a spot at the medical school and uh, uh, I graduated uh, like summa cum laude, it means with praise. And uh, I started to work as an obstetrician and gynecologist uh, in Budapest uh, uh, at the university clinic. So I, I had a really uh, nice uh, uh, spot to work at. But uh, 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 after my, my two daughters were born, I was about uh, 31, two, something like that. Then um, I realized that I I will not have time for everything, to be a mom, to be a doctor, to be a painter. Uh, I'm not a wonder woman. I look like one, but I'm in the real life, I'm not. <laughs> so I had to pick uh, just two out of three lives. <laughs> so then we moved to New York and I started to paint in New York, basically. So for two years, I studied painting in, in uh, the Art Students League and uh, School of Visual Arts, SVA, and then applied for, for a spot at the Hungarian Academy. I got admitted. I'm really proud of the fact that I, I got admitted to two totally different universities as soon as I tried. <laughs> Uh, after graduation, I also studied with uh, private uh, teachers, so all together for 10 years or something. Then I started my, my so-called career in art, and we were in the uh, artist community in Budapest, uh, called Budapest Art Factory. We are like 10 uh, artists there, and uh, since then I've been working uh, there, painting as a full-time artist. How many and years ago is that? It was uh, uh, Budapest Art Factory, it was two years ago. Two years ago? Yeah. So actually you're quite new in the full-time artist's mm -hmm. life. Yeah, <laughs> we can tell that. Did you, is there any point yet where you said you, you regretted your decision or you're no. absolutely no, of course happy not. happy with it? <laughs> No, I'm totally happy with it. I met great persons like you. <laughs> so, <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> I think being happy doesn't really depend on what you do. It's a state of the mind. And uh, uh, I would have been happy uh, to be an obstetrician too. But, um, um, but it's a kind of luxury to me to feel, fulfill this kind of dream. Uh, as a child to be a painter, a full-time painter. Yeah, and then you're also very talented. <laughs> I think that helps. All right, regarding your art, um, how would you describe 
your art if you have like if somebody comes to you and says mm -hmm. what what is what your art is standing for describe mm -hmm. it in, in a few words <laughs> or a few sentences <laughs> i can describe it in two words or endless sentences <laughs> whichever as you wish so, uh, this is called uh, imaginary realism it means that i use uh, objects from from the visible world like figures plants animals people every kind of object uh, uh, landscapes flowers whatever but uh, i don't paint them just uh, to show how beautiful they are but i uh, construct imaginary words of my own and uh, i i use uh, The, the visible objects uh, to describe this word in my head. And I always build uh, the pictures around a certain thought. And uh, uh, I think this is the most important part of the painting. Not really that uh, the, um, for example, behind us there is, the, you can see two horses and uh, Uh, pretty young girl sitting on the horse, but uh, it's not just a decorative object because the painting is about gluttony, and uh, uh, gluttony is not a very pretty uh, feeling when you are not satisfied with what you have. You have the greatest, uh, most beautiful horse in the world, uh, well behaved, but uh, you you are not satisfied, it's not enough, you want another one. The other one is not more beautiful or more expensive. Uh, uh, I think even uglier than the one you have. <laughs> I mean, in the painting that the girl has. Why we are not just satisfied with what we, we have in life? I'm, I'm always amazed by the, the human nature. And I try to understand people's behaviors. That's, that's the most fascinating thing among everything <laughs> in, in the world, I think. <laughs> that's why, yeah. it's, why the title of this painting is We Always Want Something Else. Yeah, yeah correct. Well, do you start with the title and then you, you search for, like, for the motive? Or mm -hmm. do you have like, the motive and then you search for the title? Mm, I always have the motive first. I work a regular day in the studio. I go in in the morning, I start to uh, carry on with, the, with my previous painting. But in the meantime, like I spend eight or ten hours in the studio, in the meantime, when, when I'm already doing the old painting, I, I start to think about uh, every kind of idea that uh, uh, mm, I, I saw someone, for example, on the tram, Uh, and she or he said this and that, uh, and why, why did she say such a thing? Like the everyday life around me just induces, uh, uh, the, uh, it induces uh, uh, thoughts in me, uh, like, and, I, and I then search the literature, like psychology, theology, uh, philosophy, whatever, I got interested in it. Uh, while already uh, working on an old painting. So it's like a process. So uh, uh, during the same uh, time, I have uh, multiple paintings in my head here. I normally don't do lots of sketches and studies because I, I keep everything in my head. And uh, um, as, I, as I keep thinking about them, like for days and weeks, because Uh, for example, a painting like this uh, takes up like a month or more than a month, like six weeks sometimes or eight, depends on the complexity of the painting. And I have time to figure out the next painting. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when I know the subject or the question I want to paint about, then I, I figure out how, how can I uh, visualize this uh, uh, problem. Then. I collect uh, the people for the painting. So in the meantime, when I paint the old piece, I have to do the photo shoot for the new one. So by the time I finish the previous painting, I have everything ready to start the new painting. 
So <laughs> there are uh, different stages of the works in my head. Uh, some of them exist only in my head, some of them in, <laughs> in uh, uh, sketches, uh, some of them already uh, prepared with uh, studies, photo shoots, like for, for example, for one work I need 60, 80 photos because I always pick uh, little details from different photos I, and I also uh, collect materials from the internet, like uh, Pinterest and uh, other uh, resources. And uh, uh, when I start the new painting actually, I uh, change the painting even in the progress. Okay. So it's, uh, it's uh, not a simple way to figure out a complicated <laughs> figurative painting like this. Okay. Yeah. So what you're actually painting only at, on one painting at once yes. and then you do all the, the preparation for the next mm -hmm. one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Besides, but you're not painting two paint, different paintings with different themes and motives at the same time. No, except uh, if I have a portrait commission, for example, which is urgent because it's someone's uh, birthday or anniversary and I have to be on time with, okay. with, the, with the portrait. That's the only exception. So how many paintings do you usually create per year? Like 12. <laughs> <laughs> one per month. One per month. And okay. then I was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I did I I weren't lazy for a minute. That's <laughs> that's my optimal. I, I try to uh, be quicker, uh, more effective, but uh, uh, it depends of course also on the size of the paintings and uh, how complicated they are. A lot of things. So you already described a little bit what a usual day mm -hmm. looks like. Mm -hmm. um, you've worked as a doctor before, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. turned to be an artist, um, and you had a very structured day, I guess. Mm -hmm. was a lot of working hours. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Did you change like your mindset after you changed your job, that you said, okay, now I can work whenever I want to, or mm -hmm. do you also work very strictly, like a special amount of hours a day and have like the same schedule, just doing something different? No, I even eat the same thing every morning. <laughs> it's, not, it's uh, I know it sounds a little bit autistic, but I always have the same food for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and then at 10 o'clock, and then at 1 o'clock, between 4 and 5, <laughs> and 8 o'clock in the evening. So I'm actually a time machine. <laughs> <laughs> so you're still structuring your day exactly for almost every minute. <laughs> I tried, but uh, you know, if you have kids, then it's not that easy to be on time with everything because you know I don't know if you know this saying that uh, uh, people are planning and God is laughing <laughs> so we can plan if we want to <laughs> sure. sometimes something comes in between something things get just messed up <laughs> so there, a lot of figures are showing up in your uh, artworks mm. um, you already said you need up to 80 photographs for one painting. Mm. Um, so I guess mm. the, the humans in, and the, the, the animals mm. in your paintings actually are existing or... Yes. So who are they? They are my poor family members and poor neighbors and poor relatives and friends and uh, artist colleagues. So I basically, uh, it's not a nice word to, see, to use, but I, I use people <laughs> in, <laughs> in, my, in my surroundings. And uh, I, so far I had only one volunteer. <laughs> I had to persuade everyone to mother for me or blackmail them even. <laughs> or pay them, like for example my daughters. I had to raise their pocket money to <laughs> mother for me, <laughs> but they are the worst. 
<laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Just leave this out. <laughs> <laughs> So there is this painting, uh, <coughs> Pro Patria. Mm -hmm. um, so who is actually uh, in this painting? Uh, and what's the story behind the painting? Because that's actually the. I the, I tried my lovely. I, I I persuaded my lovely husband to model for me. Uh, he is the uh, exactly uh, as he is. He is the figure in the middle. On the right, uh, the figure with the uh, moustache and beard and, and a little bit longer hair. That's how I, I added some hair <laughs> to his face. because So I didn't want to add the same figure. I, I do this trick very often that I use the same model. I just change the hair color mm -hmm. and I add some other. Uh, I, I just like uh, modify the nose or something. and. And then you have a totally new person. You don't need. Oh, so actually, it's all three are your husband. No, uh, the, the figure on the left. It's a very angry face, mm. and it's uh, from internet, from the internet. Oh. But I, I just uh, couldn't find uh, such an ang angry face I needed <laughs> for for the painting. So I, I had to look. For <laughs> it on all the right. Internet. So why, why did you need an angry face? What's I the story behind the, the painting? Uh, uh, you know, it was the election year in Hungary, you know, last year, and uh, uh, you know we had this massive media campaign, like brainwashing uh, poor Hungarian people every day, fr coming from the TV. That oh, this party is so bad because this, 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 and the other part is that, that no, the other one is so bad because this and this. So uh, I just had enough of these uh, political fights, uh, and uh, and I I had this feeling that we can always see the same faces. Just sometimes one of them uh, comes out, the other one disappears uh, for a while, and you can see them again. It's like a carousel going round, round, but um, um, uh, the main purpose uh, of the elections, saving the, the homeland, uh, that's why the painting is called Pro Patria, for the homeland, uh, just uh, get, gets lost in this battle, in this... Uh, political <laughs> war <laughs> <laughs> and you know it was so funny I when I put the, the painting on Instagram one of my friends from New York uh, wrote me how do you know about New York political life <laughs> 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 oh I thought to him oh Bert I do have no idea about Giuliani and uh, his friends but <laughs> I suppose the same everywhere it is yeah. Probably the same everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we got a lot of your paintings uh, mm -hmm. right now exhibiting it here in, in Regensburg. Which one mm -hmm. is actually the most challenging painting? Which one was the most challenging painting and why? You mean for technical, from technical yes. point of view? Um, I think the most uh, tiring, <laughs> I, I won't say challenging because figuring out the painting was not challenging but uh, actually painting it uh, was a little bit more complicated than the rest was the back irises because it's a tall painting mm -hmm. so when a, a painting is taller than you that's the uh, that's the most difficult uh, uh, technical issue because then you have to climb the stairs you have to climb ladders and uh, when it's august and it's 40 degrees in the studio, climbing up and down and up and down for five weeks, then it's, it's quite <laughs> hard. And when you, uh, you uh, got, uh, you know, I, when I painted the top part of the painting, I, I built a structure from, uh, I'm afraid of heights. That's another issue too. <laughs> so. Uh, I just couldn't use the regular, uh, I don't know, uh, do you know how uh, painters uh, work when they, they part the, the walls up high? They, uh, we, we also can use those kind of uh, not very wide thin, uh, structures, but uh, for me it's not, it wasn't suitable because I, I don't feel 
well, when I climbed <laughs> those structures. So I, I had to build a special uh, structure from, from uh, dining tables. So it was like a very, it, it was a very wide uh, structure. And uh, I, I put all my stuff, what, which I use on the floor, on top of this building. And uh, I, I put some ladder uh, next to it and I climbed up. But I still had this feeling of uh, working on the floor. Mm -hmm. So I somehow ha had to be cl more clever than myself. <laughs> so you tricked yourself. I tricked, I tricked myself into the feeling that I'm working on the floor actually. <laughs> so, um, but lucky I never had to paint the Sistine Chapel. I don't know what I would do. <laughs> And you know what, and you climb all up and you realize you forgot one thing <laughs> downstairs and you have to go down again. So then it's, it's complicated. But you learn to focus when you do things like this. So you I don't forget so. anything. Then. <laughs> <laughs> all yeah. right. Um, well, we got a few paint or mm -hmm. you're actually quite active in competitions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. around yeah. the world uh -huh. um, and we got some paintings here which already took place in some co mm -hmm. competitions mm -hmm. um, which ones were the last ones and um, you, you took part of and also which ones were the last you won with mm -hmm. which painting uh, the last one uh, I think was uh, this painting uh, uh, in London, uh, the Visual Artist Association Great Britain uh, had a competition. Uh, it was called the uh, uh, 2023 International uh, Exhibition and Scholarship Competition and I was lucky enough to win it and uh, hopefully I will have a show uh, in, in the summer, during the summer months in, in London. Very nice. So, is, have you ever had a solo exhibition in the size of an exhibition yet, or is it the first one? No, I had smaller one in Hungary, smaller solo show, but uh, not this big. And of course, uh, the whole environment wasn't this lovely <laughs> world building, so now. This is, the <laughs> this is the largest <laughs> so far. <laughs> Very nice. So this is the first time exhibiting in Germany, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, yeah. First time in Regensburg for sure. Mm -hmm. um, how do you like the city yet? You had some time today to walk around and have a look or? I listened you... to the mass this morning in the cathedral. Oh. Mm -hmm. Very nice. It was an accident. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, it was so lovely, and uh, I was uh, I was thinking about uh, the cathedral was built for six hundred years, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I, I wanted to collect uh, some thoughts this morning uh, for a kind of opening speech, whatever. <laughs> That's my hobby to give speeches to my family. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I just didn't know what should I talk about. And when we this morning went into a cathedral and I listened to the mass, uh, the choir is just amazing and the organ in the cathedral. Uh, and uh, I, I was thinking that these, these people, these Regensburg people who, who built this amazing St. Peter's Cathedral for 600 years, they were, they were not stupid people, they were amazing uh, geniuses who, who knew the most important thing on earth that believing in something is the most important thing you can do in your life. No matter what you believe in, doesn't matter. But you must have something in your life uh, to be passionate about. And this cathedral is about the faith of people believing in something that uh, 
they will complete this cathedral. Just, can you imagine how many generations of people built this cathedral during these 600 years? And this one is even called, for God's sake, the new cathedral. Because the old one was 500 years older. It's all together 1,100 years. Can you imagine? No, we cannot. Like, well, actually, actually, it is, there is like a background story. It is, it's not even done yet. Really? So it, it's missing. supposed to be the, the longest building or the longest construction in the world because there has never been a time where there was not one single construction at the building. So, yeah, so you, last, mean, you mean the repair, last 2,000 years, almost 2,000 years, there has always been a construction uh. on, the, <laughs> on that cathedral. So people say it's actually not even finished yet. Uh. <laughs> No, it's like the Barcelona Cathedral, yeah. <laughs> the same. So uh, I was really inspired by the Regensburg Cathedral uh, to talk about uh, maybe in the, the opening uh, in the Vernissage, that uh, um, to have something to believe in, uh, to have a goal in your life, uh, to be passionate about something, that's the most important. And then along the way, you can gather all the people around you who can help you to reach your goals. So I think the most important thing is a goal, to believe in something, and then uh, collect all the friends, family around you who can help you on your way, and then to be grateful for them. That's the key for happiness. And everybody wants to be happy. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, the, that's the most important thing in life. That's actually quite a nice bridge to my last question. Um, so, what will be the next painting goal exhibition? What do, what do you wish for? I really never wished for anything. I, I, I just had this uh, very high idea of helping uh, uh, representational arts along the way because. I always believed uh, from the bottom of my heart in this kind of art. I, I never found my place in the abstract world and uh, uh, for a long time I thought to myself I wasn't a real artist just because, just because I didn't uh, uh, f feel any attraction towards uh, abstract art. And I was surrounded, I was surrounded by this sea of abstract art and uh, I just couldn't find my place. But uh, 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 when I realized that this kind of art also exists in New York, that was the place when I came closer to my goals, then I, I thought to myself, I have everything, I found my family, my artistic uh, environment and family. And uh, uh, that's basically, that was my goal. And uh, if you are enthusiastic enough about something, then people can feel it in you and, uh, and they join you and they help you on your way because you are authentic to yourself and you can communicate this strong belief. And then uh, uh, I always have these uh, uh, the competitions and uh, uh, around the world, uh, but it, it is a small world and, uh, and uh, uh, we know each other with other artists and uh, uh, of course these, these are ongoing projects. I don't call them goals because uh, I, I do this every year again, again, again and compete, compete. I call myself a racehorse. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> at, uh, but these are not goals, these are projects. My goal uh, is maybe to uh, even um, to improve my technique, skills, because that's a never-ending story. <laughs> and of course, uh, along the way, uh, to have exhibitions, but to have exhibition, to have an exhibition cannot be a goal in itself. It's a result of the whole process. That's not the goal. The goal is to to unite our forces with other artists to help representative mm. art to gain uh, space in the art world and to gain recognition. And uh, 
this way, you know what? I don't think it's very easy to believe in ourselves. Uh, you know, all these have self have books uh, say believe in yourself, do this and do that <laughs> and that uh, to to believe in yourself. But it's not that easy. It's very nice if you believe in yourself, but believing in a bigger idea, bigger than you, it makes it a lot more easier because. You don't have to believe you are such a great person, talented, whatever. You just do what you do because, because other artists and the art itself needs you, needs your work. I don't know if I was clear <laughs> I think or that not. was a very, very nice uh, finish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it was absolutely clear and I really, really thank you. you You're welcome. Took your time and I I'm looking you. forward for this evening. I thank you for the opportunity and for your work. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs>